So today, new live video is going to involve one thing that there's a lot of controversy around, teaching woe. This is another one that we get a lot of questions about and I'm sure you've all been waiting for in this series. But we want to start by talking about a couple different things. First of all, there are a ton of different ways to teach your dog woe. There is a woe post, a woe board, a woe barrel. Um, you can use a half hitch in combination with the woe post and maybe the woe barrel, depending on exactly what kind of pulley system you set up. Um, there's also a suitcase handle. Now, all of these different things work. Obviously, there are lots of people that use them. Um, all of them work better in different scenarios. But the way that we do things involves a couple different processes that are different than, than the way that some do. So I'm going to lay that out for you today. To start with, we don't teach anything with collars. And if you've watched our previous videos, you've seen our philosophy in that. And I've preached that, that you can't teach anything with any collar. So um, to start with, we teach the behavior using some form of positive reinforcement. Um, we use pigeons, and I know we've had a video of this before. We'll probably link this in here later, but we use pigeons to help reward dogs. Um, you can also use retrieves. Now, in that pigeon process, we show the dog stops and stands there. That's the woe behavior. And then they get rewarded by us releasing the pigeon. Once the pigeon takes off, they get to chase that as the reward. When they're coming back, they see the bird, they stop again, they know as soon as they stop and stand there, that's the woe behavior, the next pigeon comes out. So timing is important with that, but it's a really good way to teach dogs to woe, but to be able to do that at a distance away from you. A lot of these other methods require us to be right next to the dog, and then you struggle with having a dog woe at five or 10 or 15 or 20 yards away from you. So pigeons is where we start. Once the dog is stopping, then we start to overlay a cue. We use a whoop as a warning. You will have seen me or heard me say this. Um, and the reason for that is because we want woe to mean stop, stand there, don't move anymore. And if the dog is running, it may take two or three or four steps in order for them to stop. Every dog's a little different with that, but we want that whoop to mean Woe is coming, so you better stop. Now, dogs are very anticipatory. They anticipate that woe is coming, and most of them will stop on the whoop pretty quick, but that is the difference. So it is whoop, whoop, whoop. I use a hand. Dogs are predators. They see movement. Our hands are white. They pick up on that really easily, and it looks very similar to a bumper in our hand or the pigeon in our hand. So. All of these things over, excuse me, all of these things overlay. Um, once you have a dog that has an understanding of stopping and standing there, then we introduce their cue with the whoop and whoa noise. Then we use, um, the next step that we're gonna move into is the dogs working in the field. We try and develop a uh, dog to point their birds naturally. So you've seen with Max so far, we took him out, we started him on birds and launchers, then he made a great progression from that over a few sessions to hunting bigger in the field, pointing, allowing us to pretty well walk all the way into the birds. We tried not to push that too much, but we developed him naturally, bringing out his natural desire to point and hold birds and be steady on those birds um, before we've even, before we moved into formally woe training. The next part of this process um, moves from that to being able to ask him to stand there longer. And the only way that we can do that is if we can actually say whoa well and him understand that and then we can reinforce that with the collar. So that is where we're at. We have done our pigeon work. We've got him through the field. He's pointing birds. He's doing a great job with that as you saw previously. We started killing some birds over him and now the next step for him is formal woe training. Now, when we move into our formal woe training process, we, I talked about a couple different methods, we actually use a belly collar. Um, the collar goes around the dog's belly. We use stimulation there as opposed to on their neck to begin with. 
and there's a really good reason for that but once they understand that then we move we transition that to the neck and then they can go back to the field so when you have a dog or dogs that go through our program they all of the collar so far involves some form of movement go away from us come to us and switching that collar to their belly does a couple different things first of all it puts um, a separation between for their mind this is something new and it's a little easier to make this transition but on top of that the stimulation on their belly tightens those ab Abdominal muscles up a little bit, which makes it a little more uncomfortable for them to stretch out and move, which is their natural movement, and it allows them to feel more comfortable standing still. So today we're going to show you this with Mac. Um, it's going to take anywhere between three and four different videos, and we'll show you each individual part of him learning everything new. We're going to start today with him getting comfortable wearing the belly collar. We're going to put this on him loosely. Um, and then allow him to feel comfortable, tighten it up to where it's fitting properly. You tighten it around their abdomen the same as you would around their neck. You want to be able to put a few fingers in there. Um, too loose, they're not going to feel the collar. Too tight, they're not going to be able to move. So I'm going to grab Mac, and then we're going to get started with this. Cat, if you just want to play some, you know, elevator music or something while we wait, we'll be right back. Right. If only I had an app for that. I guess uh, get to listen to me hum or whistle or something, which I'm terrible at both. So, do, 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 do. Anyway, uh, more about woe training coming up. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions as well. Uh, if you want to post them now during the live video or we'll check back and continue answering questions once this is posted. We don't have a problem answering any more of these questions for you. And Max out here jumping at the camera. Come on, buddy. And we just had a phone call come in. Hopefully it didn't interrupt any of the live video stream. It looks like we're still good. Okay, we'll have to call them back later. So, we got Mac running around here. Um, I want to demonstrate really quick how we've shown don't come any closer Don't or I'm gonna, closer. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to see this. I wanna demonstrate, he loves to retrieve, so we can do one of two different things here. We talked about pigeons, I'm gonna show you what that looked like just as a little reminder. He's running around, we can say whoop, whoa. He stops and stands there. We can build off of this as well. We move around a little bit. Oh. As soon as that bird goes, I said okay, release the bird, he gets to chase it. This is a fun game that develops this woe behavior before we actually use the collar to re reinforce it. Same thing with our retrieves. I said you can take that bumper up. Whoop. Whoa. Give him a retrieve. Oh. Make a retrieve and see where it goes. And a boy. Good boy. Right here. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, you can hunt because you want for a big run around. Okay, so I mentioned the couple different things that happen there. Um, we can use those pigeons to start that behavior. We can also do the same thing with the bumper. He stops when I say, whoop, whoa, but he's not going to stand there forever. This is where the collar conditioning comes into play. It's just like everything we do. We teach with positive reinforcement. They learn the behavior. He has an understanding of recall. Then we overlay the collar. He has an understanding of place training. Then we overlay the collar. All of the collar conditioning is gonna make these things better. So, how to, how we do this with woe training involves that belly collar. Now, with your little girls, it's not as big of a deal. With the little boys, we wanna make sure and not tuck their penises into the strap. It's a penis. Um, Good thing you're not 12. I guess. I still am. Um, but it goes around their belly. Now, eventually we're going to cinch this up to where it'll be about as tight as what you would put their neck collar on. To start this process, we want them to be able to learn how to be comfortable with this. So I'm going to put quite a bit of a gap here so you can feel a little bit of pressure, but it's not tight, tight. Good. 
That way he can be comfortable moving around with that collar on his belly. Exactly. He's going to get used to this, and the smaller steps that we take here, the easier that gets. So we will either do a couple retrieves with him, let him chase a couple pigeons. If he feels comfortable with the belly collar, then we'll, we'll tighten it up just a little bit. see he's not moving as much, uh, which means that we need to spend a little bit of time to help him to feel comfortable. Back, back. Now in this process, I wanted to make one mention here. We have two collars on him. Um, most collar companies out there have multiple dog systems. The collar that we're using is DT Systems 1820 plus unit. You could easily have three different collars on one transmitter. It's a really powerful training tool, especially when we get here, to have two collars. So we can recall him with the collar around his neck. Good boy. And have this belly collar to be able to start this process. Mac. He seems pretty comfortable. You know, his tail's up, he's confident, he's moving around. I'm going to tighten this down a little bit more. Again, similar to the way that we tighten down an e-collar around their neck. We're gonna go so that we have the ability to put a couple fingers in here. Again, you wanna check and make sure that their little penis is not wrapped up in there, otherwise it prevents them from being able to pee. Um, but this is pretty snug around his waist. Tuck this strap up out of the way. Good. Now, we will do the same thing here, throw another pigeon or do a retreat. We need him to be comfortable moving as it is tighter. Mac, every dog's going to have a little bit different response to this. Whoop. Whoa. Up. He again seems pretty comfortable moving. And the reason he needs to be comfortable moving is that we need to teach him to stop. And if he doesn't want to move to begin with, we're not actually able to teach him to stop moving. Absolutely. Movement is very important. Some dogs figure out really quick how to stop or they feel the belly collar and that's enough of an annoyance that they don't feel comfortable moving anymore. If you move right into just putting emphasis on standing there, then you're not going to have a dog that fully understands what we're asking dog that's standing still, which is part of the process, but not all of the process. If he doesn't continue moving, we don't know if he's learning and understanding what we're asking. Now, the way that I like to do this to begin with is identify the dog's level of sensitivity on their belly. Most dogs are going to be more sensitive on their belly than they will be on their neck. So if your dog typically responds to a 10 uh, or halfway up on the collar, whatever it is, on their neck, usually they're gonna be drastically less. So we start with the bottom, one. Now some dogs are more sensitive and even one is a lot and then we have to reevaluate stuff. That's where lots of different methods come into play, but usually dogs are all right, so. As well as a lot of times it's more startling to them at first because they've never had a belly collar on. We've done everything else with a neck collar, so it takes them a minute to get used to feeling that stimulation exactly. on their bellies. So while he's moving, I'm gonna run a little bit of collar, continuous stimulation on his belly on the lowest level and see if he acknowledges it, if he turns to look at it, if he doesn't feel it at all, and we'll figure out what level is gonna work best for him. Good. Come on. That was a one. So he felt the collar and he stopped moving. Come on. Now, he already is feeling, he's looking for what's going on here. What can, and stopping is usually how he gets rewarded. I think that we're gonna be able to stay in the one to two range, because he doesn't really, I mean, he's definitely showing, um, he's definitely feeling the collar at that level, and we're gonna work through using pigeons or retrieves to help him keep moving as well as to stop at the same time. So we can condition the collar aspect of things 
using a game that he already likes to play. Oh. There you go. So we have a dog that is not moving as much now. That is part of the belly collar. And what we will do with him today, this is where the it turns into two, three, maybe four sessions, is we need to get him moving again. And what that's going to take depends on every dog just a little bit different. What that takes is going to depend on... <laughs> what that actually takes depends on the dog, and for every dog, it's a little different. So, back. Oh. We're going to switch to retrieves for him, which is going to hopefully pull him back into the movement category, because we need movement. Ready? Up! Come on. Good. Right here. Come on. Mac. 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 The other side of things is we do have his neck collar on. If we need to, we can use vibrate on that to help keep movement. I just want him to move right now. I need him to feel comfortable with this belly collar and the fact that he wants to just stand there doesn't necessarily mean that he's apprehensive about anything, but doesn't feel 100% comfortable because before he was just running around and having a good time. And once he felt that stimulation for the first time on his belly, the movement kind of cut out. Absolutely. The belly collar is a really fast way to teach collar conditioning to whoa. It really, really, really helps the dog to stand there. Um, and that is the most comfortable position. Get his attention. Come on. Come on. I want you to move, buddy. Good. Have a vibrate on his neck. Good. Ready? Whoop. Whoa. Up. So this is going to work better for him. Atta boy, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Now, we're going to use the two of these together to begin with here and see how this works for him. I'm going to use I'm going to start to overlay the stimulation when I ask him to do something. He's feeling pretty confident standing there. And I'm going to start to use the stimulation on the level 1 on his belly at the same time. Then I will release him through a retrieve. If during this process he stops wanting to move, it means that we're probably moving a little bit too fast through the process. We need to take a break, help him to get a little more comfortable. Now, another way that that might be is just him wearing the belly collar for field runs, or it may take one or two sessions of him feeling more comfortable with this. Okay, so we need movement. going to, just like we have before, ask for whoa before we throw the bumpers. Come on, Mac. Good. Whoop. And he's feeling the belly collar at the same time. As soon as he stops, the collar shuts off. Now, you saw him turn around, kind of. He's feeling the belly collar, but it's enough collar to get his attention, but not enough collar that it feels uncomfortable. Up. Throw the bumper, he gets to go make a retrieve, or be distracted. So this is a really good sign where he's at in this training session that he's starting to understand what's going on, but we probably need to end this session here. Good boy. In this session here, where he's starting, he's feeling more comfortable with the belly collar, He's acknowledging it when you use stimulation. He's acknowledging when we're using stimulation. And in our next session, what we'll end up doing more of is more retrieves. The more comfortable he starts to feel with this, the less he's going to have a problem moving, the less it's going to be distracting for him. And then once he is stopping consistently with the belly collar and doesn't have any gulp, gulp. doesn't have any apprehension, then we're going to make a transition from the belly collar back to his neck collar. So we will show you those videos. Um, we'll probably try and shoot one with him again tomorrow. And then 
Uh, and every step of this process, the woe training process with Mac, we will do a live video of so you can absolutely. see his progression through this process.